In this demo, we'll see how an organization would benefit from using Kinetica as an all-in-one platform for machine learning and data science. And here we have historical data on Airbnb listings in the area of Berlin. And we want to understand how the features of these listings shape that price value. So we'll use Kinetica to interrogate the data and see are there any underlying features that may dictate price? And can we build a model that will accurately predict future listings that may come to market? And there are several advantages of using Kinetica to accomplish this. When you use Kinetica as a machine learning platform, you're not only getting the platform, but you're getting to take advantage of all of the other functionality Kinetica has to offer. So that's everything from the raw processing power of the GPU, the geospatial services, the location intelligence, the graph solvers, and that data science platform. So that's going to accelerate the traditional data science workflows. And this is something many organizations struggle with today is actually building a model and putting it into production at an enterprise grade level with the ability to scale. And that's mainly due to the fact that most data science technologies today are focused on academia and research, and they lack the infrastructure necessary to accomplish this. So companies work around this by stringing together independent technologies, and it's time expensive, it's resource expensive, it doesn't scale well, and they're having to devote teams of bodies to build out these complex data pipelines to migrate data from the source to the training and execution environment, conduct the inference, then migrate it back to the source. And then they have to build analytical pipelines to set up a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. Kinetica solves this by streamlining the entire process and enables users to embed their models directly into their active analytical applications in a push button environment. And they can choose from a variety of TensorFlow and Rapids templates or develop their own custom algorithms in any language they want. So we're going to walk through that process of actually building a model, embedding it in the Active Analytics Workbench, deploying it on Kubernetes with a full auditing system and the ability to visualize that model right alongside the data in these dashboards. So similarly to most data science workflows, I'm going to start by exploring the data. And this is something Kinetica really accelerates with these tools that we call slices. So these are most similar to plots or figures that you would generate in your independent environment. And you can look at things like distribution curves, box plots, scatter plots, histograms. You can conduct correlation analysis and see, is there a relationship between size and price? You can look at individual feature analysis. You can look at combinations of features. So something like two bedroom, one bathroom units with various cleaning fees. And these are all questions that we're going to ask to see what does our data look like and how does it interact? And this is going to help us determine how to build a model that can most accurately predict those future listing prices. So once the data has been explored, I'm ready to train a model. And here I've developed an extreme gradient boosting regression model using all of the popular Python libraries. So once I've optimized this model and I deem that it's ready to be put into production, the first step in actually taking it from this independent environment and getting it into Kinetica is to containerize it and put it on Docker. So I'm going to include all of the libraries that I used to train this model, and I'm going to have pip install those when we push it to Docker. I'm going to include the Kinetica black box SDK, and that's provided by Kinetica. The user doesn't need to touch this, can be left as is. I'm going to give the file that actually makes the inference. So this is going to receive data from the Active Analytics Workbench, conduct the inference, then return the target variable. I'm going to include the pre-trained model that I serialized to disk that's actually going to make the inference. And then I'm going to include the scaling and the feature engineering. And this is important because any pre-processing that was applied to the training data needs to be applied to the new data in, in order to maintain consistency. So at this point, I'm ready to push this to Docker. So I'm going to give my Docker username, I name the container, and then I go ahead and release this. And I now have a pre-trained containerized model sitting on Docker, ready to be embedded in the Active Analytics Workbench. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to come to Models and Analytics, add a model, import black box, and then I'm going to point to that Docker URL where the container sits. So I'm going to add the tag, and then from there it's just some general descriptive information. So naming the model, giving a description of what it does, these two data fields, module and function, actually refer to the file in the container 
that makes the inference and then the function is the method within that file that receives the data and then returns the target variable. So I'm going to go ahead and name those. And then I'm going to include the features that were actually used to predict the target variable, which was in this case price. And to predict price, I use the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, size, accommodates, distance, and cleaning fee. Then I input these data types. And then I'm going to name the model and I'm ready to deploy. So I'm going to deploy this in a batch mode. You can think that we just received a million new listings and we want our model to run on top of that table and then project a fair price that we can list these properties for. But take note, you can deploy this in on-demand or continuous mode as well. And this is actually a big differentiator with Kinetica is because we house the model with the data on a unified platform, we can again leverage that raw processing power of the GPU and enable users to perform streaming analytics on billions of rows of data, leading to real-time inference, real-time decision-making. So this is a really cool feature, but for this example, we're gonna do a batch deployment. And then we're going to select the table where the new Airbnb listings reside. And then we name the table that we want our output to live in. and I can deploy now. So this will take a few seconds, but in that amount of time, this model has been deployed on a Kubernetes cluster and can be dynamically rendered in reveal. So we'll go back there. This is what it looks like. So this table gives everything from when the model was imported, when it fired off an execution, if it was a success, if it was not a success, there'll be a full error log you can look at which features were used in predicting the target variable and then that projected price value. So this is a cool organizational tool where you can keep track of the model at every stage of the execution. And at this point, we can conduct some really cool post geospatial analysis. So using a series of open source data sets, we were able to acquire all of the neighborhood transit hubs. So things like airports, railways, bus stops, taxi stops. We were able to gather all the amenities. So this is purchasing power like coffee shops, restaurants, bars, malls. We were able to gather all the most popularly visited attractions. So things like the Brandenburg Gate. And then we were able to aggregate the crime by population according to district region. And using our SQL engine, we buffered each listing by a kilometer and a half in order to examine the proximity of each listing to these features. So we calculated all the features in each buffer and then joined these values to a unified table and began to investigate, can we use these geospatially enriched features to actually improve our model performance? And the results were actually pretty cool. If you look on the left, you'll see the initial feature set. And then on the right, we have our geospatially enriched feature set. And transit score actually ended up being the fifth most important feature in predicting that target variable of price. So that's information that would have been left under the table had we not been able to leverage Kinetica's services and perform these geospatial operations. And we can even take it a step further. If you want to dive into these maps and look at these features in a geographical sense, here we have purchasing power and we have average price by neighborhood. So we can look how that's distributed across the map and see on the outskirts of Berlin, what's the purchasing power like? And you would expect not as much going on out here. These results are dynamically filtered and you can see these are very low purchasing power scores. But if we look at the centroid of Berlin, it'd be safe to assume that these results are gonna ramp up. There's gonna be a lot more to do here. And again, 
These results are dy dynamically rendered a lot higher purchasing power scores. And as you go closer to the center of Berlin, you have more purchasing power available. So this is just another tool where you can conduct some post geospatial analysis and really dive into the data and try and uncover these underlying themes and values that you may be able to improve your model's performance. So in short, Kinetica really accelerates any data science project by four key pillars. And that's that streamlined process of deploying a model on Kubernetes in a push button environment. It's the auditing system. So whether a user wants to use this as a high level organizational tool to track every model that's in production, every deployment of every model, who's working on which model, or look at it at the individual model level and see when was it brought in, when did it make an inference, which features were used, and what were the results. The ability to explore data at scale in this visual environment is a huge piece where we're really accelerating the kickstart of any data science project and allowing a user to see what's the data shaped like, how does it interact together, what's the plan for actually building a model to tackle this project. And then finally, it's really being able to leverage Kinetica as a unified platform and harness all of the services available. So again, we're geospatially enriching our feature sets and our data to actually improve model performance.